Hello. Hello. Oh, hey, I'm Barb. <laughs> How are you doing? <laughs> Thanks for joining in. Yep. Um, just getting started here. Let me check my audio. Okay. Just getting started here. All right. Cool. It's working. Hey, Sergio. Oh, wow. You guys are already here. Sweet. <laughs> uh, yep. Hey, um, I'm getting going here. Okay, yeah, Shalom from Israel. Shalom. Um, it's good to see it's been a while since we, I've done a uh, live concert, but just was feeling this was a good time to do one. Um, and uh, I've got this uh, new piano that I'm just in, really enjoying. Um, I feel really blessed. Um, it's the Roland RP501R um, that uh, it's just really been. The other piano was awesome, but this is more of a like, you know, real kind of looking piano. But anyways, um, but welcome everybody. And uh, I'm just thought that I would do this concert just kind of a concert where I'm just wanting to encourage people with music. Um, we're going to be doing some um, different types of songs. I've got a mystery song lined up that I'm going to wonder if anybody can tell me what it is in a bit. But i um, also going to be doing some Baroque music. I've really been into Baroque. I'll explain a little bit more about that. But as always, whenever I start a concert, I always play my favorite song ever, which is the Music Box Dancer. So... <laughs>
enjoyed that. Um, this piano is like, I have it set pretty much only at about like 45, 50% of volume. And it's still like, <laughs> it's still so amazing. Uh, if I put it up to 100, my ears would be blowing and the speakers would probably be um, glitching. I got this new microphone, so I'm kind of experimenting with I'm hoping it, it uh, does a good job today. Um, I've been having a lot of fun too with some of the new settings that I'm doing. Um, this is, uh, I'm going to just do a little medley of a couple of my favorite, uh, um, uh, there's a song called Lord You Are More Precious Than Silver um, and You Are My All in All in Sanctuary. Um, so, hey Svetlana, thank you for joining in. Um, this is the magical piano sound, so.
definitely of, um, uh, again, uh, sanctuary. Uh, you are my all in all, and uh, uh, we exalt thee. Um, some pretty awesome um, melodies there. Um, been having some fun, too, with uh, Chariots of Fire. It's one of my favorite songs. And so I found this one setting to kind of simulate maybe just a little bit of the sound here. Let me change one thing here. chariots of fire there um <laughs> hey there Lori. <laughs> thanks for joining in um that's always been one of my favorite songs anytime i get a chance to play on a uh grand piano uh it would always be chariots of fire um i'm gonna do i, I had one request today that somebody said uh they were they were having uh, my uh high school friend uh karen uh said that there was a virtual wedding they were having somewhere and she said play a song in honor of that um, it's some friends of hers, and I said, okay, so from one of my wedding books, uh, uh, I learned this song many years ago, um, but uh, it's actually one of my mom's favorite songs, too, so mom, I'll dedicate this to you, too, and it's uh, uh, a combination of Debussy, uh, his Claire de Lune, and uh, Jesus Loves Me, so um, anyways, so I'm going to put it on a setting with some strings involved here.
Jesus Loves Me, Claire DeLune. Um, oh, thanks, Kathy. Thanks for joining in. Um, and you know, that's a great song, the, the old Jesus Loves Me, for the Bible tells me so. That is such comfort uh, in the times that, um, no, I could talk about much, but you know, with everything that's been going on in our country and our world, um, I don't, you know, looking to Jesus is, is, uh, is the hope we have and the answer we have. Um, and uh, that he's in control. So, um, but anyways, yeah, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, I'm gonna do a mystery song now, um, and uh, I, might, I might just wait for a little bit on that one, actually. Um, I'm gonna come back to that. Uh, I was sharing how I got into, over the summer, I w I've been having fun exploring some classical music, and, um, oh, thanks. This is cool, I can actually look on my iPad and actually read what people are writing. That's kind of cool. Because um, when it's up on the, the iPhone, I can't. So, um, hey there. Hey, Henry. Cool. Yep. Um, but thanks again for joining in, uh, everyone. Um, but, uh, so I, I've really been enjoying the Baroque period of music um, and a little bit of the history of Baroque. Of course, we think of Baroque... Uh, the, the, the most famous of all composers would be J.S. Bach. Um, and uh, I love a quote of his, I'm going to paraphrase, that he said that music uh, was given primarily as a gift from God for his glory and then also for our own personal enjoyment and the enjoyment of others. And I think that's just such a perfect quote of why, why we have music. It's such an amazing thing that touches so many hearts. Uh, it's, I call it the universal language. Um, one thing I found out is I started, um, I'm going to play a few pieces here um, with some Bach. Um, another famous composer from that time period um, of mine is Handel. Um, you, uh, you think of Handel's Messiah, but I'm going to play a few pieces with his. And then also Scarlatti, Dominique Scarlatti. And one thing I found out just today as I was doing a little research on this, which is amazing, is I, these are my three favorite Baroque composers. And uh, they were all born in the same year. I couldn't believe it, 1685. Um, so I thought that was pretty neat. And uh, just a little history on the, the, uh, the end of the Baroque period was considered to be when J.S. Bach died um, in 1750. Um, so what got me really into it was this one song. I was looking up um, on the, uh, uh, what the original piano was like. Um, I've always been a fan of both the piano and the harpsichord. And um, so I've got some, I'm going to be playing a little bit of the harpsichord here, um, but let me do something real quick. Um, so the original piano, uh, this Bartholomew uh, Christophe, okay, and he, um, he lived in the late 1600s, uh, early 1700s, and he took the, the harpsichord, and he was the one that, that invented what we know now as the piano. Um, it's called the pianoforte is what they call it back then because it's loud. Forte means loud. And you can actually, they've got a, a one of the original pianos uh, in a, the, one of the big New York museums uh, built in 1720 by him. And you can actually look it up. Just look up the world's oldest piano um, and uh, you'll find this um, on YouTube, this man playing it. This is one of the pieces uh, that he was playing uh, by Dominique Scarlatti Sonata in D minor. And it was just so pretty that I was just like, I gotta learn this. Um, so what I'm gonna do, the harpsichord sound, um, I'm gonna demonstrate here, of course. Versus the modern piano sound. Well, the original piano was kind of a combo of the two, so I'm gonna actually put them together. you do look up the video you'll sound it it sounds a little bit like that so I'm gonna play um, this beautiful song uh, by Dominique Scarlatti uh, considered the greatest uh, one of the greatest composers of harpsichord music of all time um, and uh, anyways here's it here it is
give you a little bit of a sound of uh, what that song, I thought that was a beautiful song. Um, another uh, song by Scarlatti, I actually got a whole book of his music. Um, really been enjoying it. Um, in uh, Vladimir Horowitz was a, a Russian Jewish pianist, um, considered by many to be probably the the um, greatest piano of the 20th pianist of the 20th century. I'm just going to play in, um, uh, the first movement of a Sonata in E Major uh, by Scarlatti. You can look it up. It's just a beautiful song. Um, I'm going to play this with the piano sound. Again was uh, Sonata in E major. I'm gonna do one more. Um, I'm, this is his Sonata in in C major, and this is a beautiful song. Uh, it uses a lot of going back and forth. You're gonna notice. So I think it's kind of pretty. that a little bit of Scarlatti for you um, then in the I got so into it that I had to buy a book of Bach and this is a huge book of Bach <laughs> and I'm just gonna play I'm not gonna play all of them don't worry um, but I just thought I'd play a few of my uh, favorite I'm gonna play this first one with um, Bach uh, would have uh, written a lot of his music in the harpsichord so this one is um, Invention, if I can find it, 
This is Invention Number 4 in D minor. I found this to be a very beautiful piece I've been working at. Put it on the harpsichord setting here and a little fun. Again, that was uh, a box uh, invention number four in uh, D minor. So, um, moving out of Baroque, I'm going to do one more piece here by handle since I mentioned the three. I'm going to move into something different. Um, this is called Sarabanda by Handel, and uh, it is a probably one of his most famous pieces. Um, just really got a really cool uh, sound to it. So. I'm going to do one more. This is actually a really, um, let me find it. Um, if I can, uh, where did I put it? Oh, that's just like me. There it is. This is going to be my final Baroque piece before I move on to a different genre. Um, but this is also a song uh, Handel wrote. I don't even know how to pronounce it. Hasa Kaglia, but it is just such a beautiful song. I thought I'd share it with you. Very um, peaceful. Um, so, hope you enjoy it.
enjoyed that. That was, um, uh, oh, hey, thank you. Um, that was uh, Pasa Caglia by, by Handel. Um, so now I have the mystery song. I'm going to see if anybody can guess this. Um, uh, this, I'll give you a hint. It goes back to a favorite game of mine um, growing up. And it sounds good on the accordion, but I'm going to play it on the piano here. So let's see if somebody can guess what theme this is. Anybody knew what that was? That was actually, yeah, it does. It does. Actually, that was a theme to the famous game called Tetris. Anybody ever play Tetris? Uh, I used to have the, the, I had the original Game Boy from Nintendo. That was like my favorite game. This game that you had all these little like shapes falling down and, but that was the theme song from it. And I have a, a accordion student, uh, Noah, and he's going to watch this later, I think. Um, so hi, Noah. And, uh, he um, remind I did I'd forgotten about that song, but he got me into it. He said we gotta learn this together on the accordion. So, um, so it's a lot of fun. Um, just a real upbeat. But you're right, it does sounds a little bit like Hava Nagila.
work out. Yep. <laughs> yep. Hava Nagila. Um, one of my favorite songs. Um, what else did I plan? Ah. You may know this song, um, Before the Throne of God. Um, it was actually a song um, came out the year I was born, 1997. Um, another one of my students, Ryan, in case you end up watching this, he's the one that reminded me of this song, and uh, we were learning it together. So um, Ryan's a good friend of mine. I have um, my music studio. Some of you might be wondering, how, how's that been going? Um, it's actually, God has been really good to us. Um, uh, I've, I've still been doing all online. I've got about 35, 40 students still going. Um, I get new students. I actually have um, some students out in Alaska, um, out in Anchorage, Alaska. <laughs> so it's 4,000 miles away. And um, I mean, that's just amazing. And we have crystal clear connection. Um, so we always, uh, it was this, um, two young girls I teach, um, the harp and um, the fiddle or violin. And, um, and uh, we always give a 4,000 mile fist bump at the end of the lesson, so that's fun. Uh, I've also got some students down in Texas. Um, then my friend Ryan, uh, who also takes lessons for me, um, he's from California. So I get around. Uh, I've even had him up in Vermont before. So yeah, one of the beauties of uh, technology today is that, you know, uh, I think during this time we've been able to learn how we can utilize it better. And uh, it's amazing. Yeah, I mean, uh, I've gotten very used to teaching online. Um, so if you know of anybody, just let me know. It goes really well. Um, this is the studio I teach from, so it's kind of like this, but we're sitting next to each other virtually. Um, but anyways, uh, so this is a song called Before the Throne of God. Many of you will recognize it. the throne of God. That is a uh, important, uh, um, yeah, in, in times of uh, ease, in times of trial, he's always faithful. Um, that was actually, um, uh, the Gettys uh, performed that too. In my, uh, they took that song and did a really good job of that too. Um, so this what I'm going to do is, uh, um, 
again, thanks to Ryan. So Ryan, when you do watch this, uh, he introduced this to me. And um, I've never watched the movie Little Women, but I guess it's pretty good. Um, I've heard pretty good things about it. And um, this is actually a, a really um, beautiful song. It's actually called Valley of the Shadow. Um, it's a, from a scene in the movie, I guess, where somebody's going through a really dark time. But it, get, it has the hope in the midst of it. And I just thought it really captures that. It's, a, it's actually a very encouraging song. Um, but I'm going to play it for you. It's a, just a kind of a, a slow, uh, again, Valley of the Shadow from Little Women, the movie. Enjoyed that. It's a little bit of a delay there. Yep. All right. Um, if I have any requests or anything from the, some of the songs I play in the past, let me know. Um, again, this was just kind of an impromptu uh, program that I kind of put together. Um, trying to think. I always have my little crib sheet there. It has all my ideas. So if I run out of songs, I always have something to play. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna play with the same setting. I'm gonna play uh, uh, Morning Has Broken.
morning has broken. <laughs> um, oh, wait. What'd you just say? Oh, Snoopy said I didn't want to be left out. He says, you got to liven up a little bit here. Okay, what do you want me to play? Oh, I think I know. Okay, uh, yep. I'll do this for him. He, he was interrupting me there. Brown. Yep, Snoopy's happy. Yep. So, um, yeah, uh, music is fun. And uh, whichever way you take it, uh, whether it be real upbeat like that or, or just kind of quiet and mellow, um, you know, it's a beautiful thing. Sometimes what I like to do is just kind of ad lib. See what God gives me. A song that I'm just gonna let come out.
There you have it. Music that just came out from the heart. And uh, um, yeah, you never know what God's going to give. Um, many of the songs that I've written over the years just came when uh, I was playing at the Amish store restaurant. And would just, uh, again, maybe after three hours of playing, you start to kind of don't really want to read music. You just want to feel it. Um, this is probably, uh, I call this a song without words. And uh, song I wrote called Song Without Words. Shalom, shalom. Toda Rabbah. Thank you, Svetlana, all the way from Israel. Thank you. And um, others watching and a uh, friend Sergio and Rhoda. By the way, I always like to put a plug in for Sergio and Rhoda. Um, we got to know them through their YouTube channel um, that is just amazing. Sergio and Rhoda uh, from Israel. Israel, sorry. <laughs> um, they both live in Nazareth and they do a fantastic job. Uh, you just look it up of doing these amazing videos. I think they've got like 220,000 followers now or something like that, maybe 250. But uh, not that that's what really matters, but just shows how uh, many people it's touching. But they do, they go through parts of Israel and uh, um, just really show you what it's like to be there and see the biblical history um, and also really give glory to God um, uh, and their trust in Jesus. Um, so again, thank you. Um, and uh, let's see what time we're getting. Yeah, it's getting about that time. Um, I was just going to do about an hour a day, so I'm going to I'm going to close on on uh, I think would be arguably one of the best uh, hymns of all time, or the most well known, "Amazing Grace." Um, and uh, yeah, during this time uh, again, where there's a lot of uncertainty in the world and uh, in our countries and whatever. I'm not going to go into the details. We all know what, what it's been. Um, big challenges, but um, at least I know, at least in our lives over this summer, um, through the trials that we've faced, um, we have definitely experienced God's amazing grace. 
uh, many times. And uh, I just want to encourage anybody watching that, um, that there's grace out there. There's grace through Jesus. Um, God, uh, he loved us so much that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him shouldn't perish but have eternal life. God is, is infinitely loved. And he's, uh, he, he became one of us so that he could help us and uh, died for us and uh, rose again. He's alive today and uh, he's real. And I just want to encourage you that um, uh, whatever you might be facing today, um, just think on God's amazing grace. God's amazing grace, and um, thank you all for joining in. I hope for all of you who are watching it currently, or who may watch this after it's over, because um, I'm going to put it. I'll post it on on Facebook and also my YouTube channel, uh, just to be encouraged um, as we shared. Um, 
hopefully uh, the next um, coming up. Christmas is coming up soon. Um, I love Christmas music, and um, so I'm planning on doing some some concerts along those lines um, in the coming weeks. Um, uh, so maybe Thanksgiving too. Do something special for that. So um, counting our blessings, we have a lot to be thankful for. Um, so yeah, uh, just again, thank you all for joining in, my friends, all the way from Israel and from here in America and throughout the world. I, uh, I know I had, um, had friends in other countries too, so in Switzerland too. And uh, um, so again, God bless you. And uh, yep, we'll see you again sometime. Thank you. Shalom.